I thought it would be a really good idea to talk to everybody about common plant problems in the garden. I want to talk about things that you're most likely to see in a typical garden with people who like plants. First, I want to talk about powdery mildew. Powdery mildew is one of those diseases that shows up on a huge variety of plants. I mean, everything from dogwoods to uh, crepe myrtle to uh, vegetables. And I've got some examples here I want to show you what to look for. One of the most common plants that you see with powdery mildew is Manhattan euonymus. People plant this all over. It's a reliable evergreen. It takes hard pruning without dying, um, but it's it almost invariably gets powdery mildew. And against these dark green leaves, you can see how striking those white spots are. It really shows up. In the, in the parts of the plant that tend to be in more shade seem, in my observation, to develop this more. And between powdery mildew and euonymus scale, which this plant also gets in spades, this plant usually gets some kind of issue over the summer. It is controllable. In a terrible, terrible case, it will even defoliate this shrub. You'll see the leaves drop off uh, from the middle and, and the top of the plant. And it can really uh, do a, a number. Even if it doesn't kill it, a bad infestation can seriously weaken the plant, which powdery mildew does for everything, whether it's a dogwood tree or anything else. Another plant that can get powdery mildew is crepe myrtle. You can see, let me move this out of the way, you can see this white, this fog-like on these buds this plant's about to come into bloom, that's powdery mildew. It will compromise the flowers, and that's a bad thing. Some crepe varieties of crepe myrtles are incredibly susceptible to powdery mildew. And it is really smart, if you're thinking about putting crepe myrtles in your garden and in your landscape, to research and buy powdery mildew-resistant varieties. There are many. And the United States Arboretum has come out over the last 30 years or so with a pretty extensive line of crepe myrtles of every color you can think of and everything from dwarf to tree size that are powdery mildew resistant. They all seem to be named after Indian tribes like uh, Chickasaw and Lipan and Muscogee and Natchez and things like that. Some of the most popular crepe myrtles found in landscapes today. Seek those out. They don't get this problem so badly and their blooms are usually not compromised by it. Some of the older varieties like watermelon red and such that are very popular all over the south do tend to get uh, powdery mildew. Another plant that gets it, bingo, yellow squash. That's a vegetable. This, if you can see the and you can feel it too. There's a kind of a, like a little velvety gray-white film over this leaf. That's powdery mildew. And you can see the yellow blotches starting. The mildew in, affects how the plant photosynthesizes and eventually kills the leaf. So your plant declines. And my experience with this is unchecked powdery mildew will take down squash plants. So what do you do about powdery mildew? Well, if you uh, aren't an organic gardener, there are plenty of chemicals out there that are available at garden centers and whatnot. Uh, look for chemistry called chlorothalonil, that works. Uh, triferine, that works. It's found in a lot of rose products. Uh, roses get powdery mildew too. If you are an organic gardener, um, a lot of people will tell you to use bicarbonate of soda, which is uh, uh, basically baking soda, but sodium bicarbonate but better are things like potassium bicarbonate or aluminum bicarbonate, which you can buy. They're widely available, names like bicarb and stuff like that, um, because they don't have the sodium in it, and sodium is toxic to plants, so if you use too much, you can really fry your plants. Uh, and that is a good organic remedy for, um, for uh, powdery mildew. A lot of times that stuff is more preventive than curative, uh, but uh, if you get on top of it, as soon as you see it early in the season, and, and you stay on top of it, you can really control powdery mildew in the landscape. Now I want to talk about impatience. You can see this is a kind of stressed out six pack here. It's kind of late in the season. This guy's been sitting in the six pack too long. But impatience are probably the most popular. I think they've surpassed petunias as the most popular bedding plant in American gardens. And there are several relatively new problems with impatience that you probably need to be aware of. And this plant shows one of them in fairly good detail. It's, it's not terrible yet, but it's starting. If you can see this kind of ring-like discoloration on the leaf there, 
This is, uh, and here's another one, good one, and you can see the tissue is starting to die. It's becoming necrotic. There's a, this is a virus, and there's no cure for this. It is called uh, impatience necrotic spot virus, or INSV. And it is spread by thrip, western flower thrip in particular, which is this teeny little cigar-shaped guy that gets in, feeds in flowers and is a vector for a ton of bad diseases, including uh, spotted, tomato spotted wilt. Um, if you see this, typically when it really spreads and the plants get stressed, they, they drop all their foliage, they look lousy, and you have to rip them out. Like I said, if you can try to control the thrip, which isn't easy, you can kind of take care of this. I've noticed double impatience in particular get this disease pretty badly. Spider mites are always a problem with impatience, especially in super hot summers. They're easy to control with insecticidal soap or uh, horticultural oil, but be careful when you spray any of that. In the heat and in the sun, you can get phytotoxicity, which basically means it's poisonous to plants. So do it only in the cool of the early morning or the very late evening. Another thing that, tem that impatients are now getting, and I'm starting to see it in beds around Middle Tennessee, and this is brand new, is there's a kind of downy mildew. I talked about powdery mildew. Downy mildew is a completely different disease that is affecting impatients. If you see your impatients, the leaves start to cup, the edges roll over downward, and they start dropping leaves like crazy. They quit blooming and they look kind of scraggly. And turn over whatever leaf remains and look for a white kind of velvety cover and coating on the underside of the leaf. That's downy mildew, and a good fungicide will take care of that. But in the landscape, we usually don't notice these things until it's pretty well advanced. So just keep an eye on your plants, and uh, once again, spray wisely and uh, not in the heat of the day. I want to talk about changing gears completely. There's a ton of this around. This is a piece of Leland cypress, and the end of this twig is dead, and I found one that's showing how the disease progresses. This is Ceridium canker. And Leland cypress get this. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when, unfortunately. It's very rare that a plant escapes getting this disease. And once it gets it, it's toast. There is no cure. And it gradually starts with one branch and then another branch and then the whole tree turns brown and you take it out. And it's really sad. It can happen fairly quickly. But here's a really good tip. Although this is incurable, you can really help your plants fend it off. This disease shows up, and I'm, I'm speaking to you now after an incredible dry spell in the summer, heat and no rain. That's when this disease tends to show up, after the plants have been drought stressed. If you keep your Leland cypresses well watered through dry spells, they tend to fight this disease off much better. And believe me, it's really the only recourse you have, that or not planting them. If you're wondering, oh, I love Leland's and I don't want to lose them, but I don't want to go through all that trouble, what else can I put in? Green giant arborvitae is what I tell people. It's a great plant. So that's some of the things that we have to talk about, and I hope you find it useful. Tune in next week, because we got a whole lot more.